Hi everybody and welcome back to another tutorial and today what we're going to be doing is demoing and talking about the Open Telemetry Collector. Now what is the Open Telemetry Collector and why do you actually need it or why should you potentially use it in your software ecosystem? Well, let's say for example you have a, a Java application and you're running that in your cloud so that can be an Amazon or Google, doesn't really matter. Well, as that application runs, you as a developer should be gathering metrics about like the, the latency or the percentiles of the APIs or the uptime, the memory, CPU usage, all, all of that information. And I mean, there's an abundant list there. So you take whatever's important to you. And also, for example, logs. And you want to take that observability information or telemetry information and you want to make that available in some end system like it could be Datadog or Jagger or it doesn't really matter what it is, New Relic. So you have to get it from their application to that end source. And typically in the past, what you would do is, or people still do it now, is that um, you would take your, your end cloud solution, like let's say Datadog or Observability Solution, and your whole build kit or that whole tool chain pipeline is tailored specifically to, to Datadog. And for an example, there is maybe you would have to run the Datadog agent alongside in, in the host of all your Java applications, or you would push directly from like a Java application via micrometer with the API key of Datadog to the, to the, um, the cloud API. So it's end to end. But now what we have is a vendor agnostic solution to really get that telemetry data into one or many different sources. So open telemetry, um, the collector, what that does is it's a small agent process that you can run alongside in the host of your application. And what that does is you can create then pipelines within that collector and they're a compromise of three things. That would be the receiver and that's whenever you receive information. So you're ingesting data and that can be pull or push based. An example of a, a push base would be if you're running a Java application, you can attach a, a Java agent, Open Telemetry Java agent, which can then push, which will first of all instrument your, your application, gather all the metrics automatically, and then push that data via OTEL, so the Open Telemetry Protocol, to the, to the agent, so it pushes it automatically. And then from that agent, you can then run what's called processors to enrich that data, to uh, filter the data, whatever you want, basically getting it ready to be exported. And then once it's ready, then you can then pass that to an exporter and that exporter will then take that data and push that to the final subsystem, subsystems. So that could be, you want to push it to Datadog, for example. Datadog have a, an exporter with an open telemetry. So that way you can have a vendor agnostic um, solution to really receive the data, process it, and then push it to one or many systems. And maybe you want to push it not just to Datadog, but also New Relic, and also a third system. You can do that. You can compromise these pipelines as you wish. And if there's any changes, you don't actually need to change anything in the, in the application or to change an agent from one agent to a different vendor's agent. You just need to change um, the exporters within the same agent. So it's just a configuration change at that point. So this is one of the huge benefits of um, Open Telemetry Collector, and it's getting a lot of traction in the community, lots of pull requests, lots of different um, vendors are contributing to it, contributing to it. So we have like so Datadog, they have their exporter, Prometheus, all of the good guys, all the big players are really in there now. And I forgot to mention, but we talked about a push based from your application. Well, let's say you don't want to push. Well, you can also do pull based. So if you run a Java application and you use standard micrometer, well, you can make your metrics available. Um, just at a slash metrics endpoint, which is typically uh, scraped and pulled by Prometheus. But within the OT collector, you can actually con configure a scraper, which would be a receiver, which will then scrape that local host, scrape that application for the metrics being made available. So that's an example of a pool-based receiver.
open telemetry will then start pulling just like Prometheus does if you had access to, to that host. And then again, you can transform the data, do whatever you want with it, and then send it on. And there's also extensions for the likes of OAuth2 and whatnot for different authorization. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, create a demo. And in that demo, we'll be creating a Java application, which will attach the Java agent. We'll get some metrics from some REST APIs. We'll push that across through to the open telemetry collector. We'll do some transformation there. And then what we're going to do is make that available on a Prometheus endpoint. So the OT collector will have a Prometheus endpoint. We're then going to start Prometheus and Grafana. Prometheus is then going to scrape the endpoint for the data, ingest that data, and then Grafana we're going to use to visualize the Prometheus data, create some charts or something like that. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Um, it shouldn't be too long. And yeah, let me know what you think about it. And maybe I've left something out. Please add it in the comments below or send me an email. Enjoy. I'm going to be instrumenting a Java application and pushing the metrics from the Java application through to the OTEL collector, which will perform some simple transformation and then export the data into Prometheus. And then we will visualize that data in Grafana. So this is a nice architecture, nice overview image of the, the OTEL collector. And as you can see here on the left hand side, we have the receivers and this is where the data is sourced and will be ingested into the collector. In this example, we're going to be using the OTLP and that will be pushed from our Spring application, Spring GraphQL application into the collector. And from that point inside the, the collector, you can, you can use processors and processors um, and all actually all components here, they're open source and there's a contributor repository, which is here. So as you can come here, you can come down and you can see that there's lots of different processors that have been added in. I'm going to be using this attributes processor in the example, but there's not just processors, but also exporters. There's AWS exporters, Datadog, Dynatrace, Google, I mean, pretty much everything in here that you need, Zipkin. And you can bring these into your, your collector freely if you build on the contrib image. And then once you've processed it, you can then export um, to your, your destination, wherever that has to be. And for our example, we'll go to Prometheus. And one last thing I should mention is there are extensions of this collector. And one that we will use in this example is the health extension. And that's great because if you're using any kind of orchestration tool like Kubernetes or Nomad, well then you'll want to have some probes like uh, liveness probes, readiness probes, so that you know that the application's running, is healthy or is ready to serve traffic when you start a particular instance or scale up or, or scale down. So let's go into the code here and let's start walking through it. I've already done it all and I'll be creating a PR and linking the PR to GitHub so it's a bit easier to see. First thing I did was uh, I went in, I checked out my uh, Learn GraphQL course and I added a plugin just to generate the image of this because I want to run everything in, in Docker Compose for simplicity. So we don't need to go into detail here, but basically I'm generating an image called Spring GraphQL. And inside this image, the first thing I want to configure is um, the open telemetry agent. And this agent is available um, here. So this in this GitHub repo. And what this agent will do is once you attach it to your Java application, it'll basically instrument and wrap bytecode around all of your libraries. Um, like Hibernate or Duke or your REST endpoints, GraphQL endpoints, your executors, basically everything that that uh, is running. And it'll take all the metrics and push them or expose them to the, to the collector. So that's the, the first thing you need. And what you need to do to get that is yeah, take the, the jar file here 
the released version. You can download it and it needs to be uh, attached um, to the, sorry, as part of the class path. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the, the jar which I've downloaded and I'm attaching it as a as a Java agent because this jar will actually run as a as, a, as an agent um, in your application. So now once we have this down, um, the next thing you want to do is actually configure it. So here what we do is we say that we want the metrics. At this point in time we're not interested in traces or logs and we want to export the the metrics to this endpoint. Now if you had different um, exporters, so you have a metrics endpoint and traces endpoint, well then you can, there's actually a different property here, instead of OTLP endpoint, you would use the, the metrics endpoint and then traces endpoint. But if you use this one, then it's the same endpoint for, for all. So you can do it coarse grained or fine grained. Uh, it supports uh, both. And then what I have here is um, I'm using this header because I want to transform and show an example of, of the processor. So we're going to be taking this and adding this header to all of the, the metrics as a, as, a, as a tag. And then here you can specify the protocol. In this version we're using HTTP protobuf, but it also supports uh, gRPC and uh, JSON format if you prefer that. So now that's our Java application running, and that's all we need to do on the Java side to get all of the metrics. And what we then need to do is actually start an open telemetry collector. And here, what we've done is we've took down the, the base image uh, from Docker Hub, and in the image, this is the this is the destination where it, the image expects the config to be of the collector. So what we're doing is we're taking our collector config in here and let's start to walk through this. So the first thing is I've added a health check and that's to, you know, it's just good practice. You know, if you have uh, probes or whenever you're deploying into any uh, orchestration framework or tool, the Kubernetes or, or Nomad or whatever you're using, you want to have that health endpoint. This is the default HTTP end, uh, endpoint or the yeah, the, the port, you can change this. I've just put it in for documentation purposes and to ensure, you know, if you bump versions and things and maybe it, it changes and breaks things. So here, the first thing we have to configure is let's look at the pipeline first. Here we say, okay, service extension, we want to enable this. We want to change the login level standard and then we want to create this pipeline for metrics. So we receive the data from OTLP. We're going to process it using these two processors and then we're going to export it to these two exporters. So the first one is when we receive the data via OTLP, and that's when the Java agent will push it. So whenever we come back here, this is this part, this is the OTL. It will push this in. We're going to have a gRPC endpoint, which we're not using, but it's, it's available. You can turn it off by simply um, deleting it. And this is the endpoint HTTP will be on. So 4318 and the container name is open telemetry collector so open telemetry collector 4318 that's the endpoint and here we've set this to true because here we pass it in the client id as a header and we want to use that within the processor here so when you include include metadata that will make sure that the headers are propagated through and that you can access them in processors and in the processors the first thing we do is we look for the, the metadata client ID, so it's basically a header.client ID, and we're going to stick that in as a, a tag to the to all metrics. So basically everything that will come through will be tagged with this additional um, tag. And we want to do it in batches just for, for performance reasons. Of course, just want to batch everything. So once we've added all the tags, then we want to export. And here, First thing we do is we log it. So it's a standard logger if we're in this open telemetry collector. And then what we want to do is expose all that data in Prometheus format. And what this will do is actually start an endpoint and expose that data in Prometheus format on the endpoint, 
which can then be scraped by our Prometheus server. And then, yeah, Grafana will feed that. So you can imagine here you could have, yeah, you can have Prometheus here, and then you could maybe have a different system for, I don't know, user analytics or user behavior analytics, or another system for, I don't know, um, like, uh, my, not micrometer, what's it called? Basically, any of the, the systems that I showed in here, these are all exporters, so Elasticsearch, Dynatrace, File, Exporter, Kafka, you can push this data anywhere. And you can have many pipelines. And yeah, the nice thing is if you wish to change, if you do want to push to, um, let's say if you want to go from this Lucky to Open Census or Open Search or whatever, you don't need to deploy a new agent. You just need to update this single um, open telemetry agent on this configuration file, and yeah, you can you can swap them out that way. So it's a nice kind of agnostic way of, of dealing with all of these um, sources and pushing them to other places, and also having a consistent way to process process and enrich the data in the middle. So that's the collector running. And here, yeah, we just are exposing some ports for it locally. And then here, I'm not going to get into detail, but this is just Prometheus. I've got some, I've started a Prometheus server, which will scrape and call um, these two endpoints. So 8888 um, is the collector's metric, so the actual the collector's uptime, the collector's what it's doing. And then we have the Prometheus exporter, which, so this will be exposed using the metrics of this Java application and in Prometheus we need to tell it to um, yeah, scrape these two endpoints so here we have our targets in Prometheus to say okay 8888 or 8889 and it's going to go and scrape and the last thing we have here is Grafana and in Grafana that's a visualization tool basically when we can go and we can visualize um, Grafana and here we just add a data source which is the Prometheus um, endpoint here as you can see it's 1990 and Prometheus so let's go ahead and start this if I open up a new so I can just run docker compose up because everything's built And sometimes it takes a little while to start, depending on your application. But here you can see the collector has started and it's it's um, starting to do the metrics. We're just waiting on the Java process to start. Now. And once that's available, what we're going to do is call the GraphQL endpoint and generate some metrics which will then be able to push through the collector and then be available in Grafana. So the application has now started. So let's go to here and let's just call the endpoint a few times. It's always slow in the first request in GraphQL. So now it's warm, it's this is spam, let's get some data in there. And we should see in the collector that we're getting some metrics to. So here in the collector, we're, we're seeing some GraphQL um, data fetcher metrics coming through, some JVM metrics, um, processing JVM, whatever you need. And at this point, you know, you wanna go through your application and you know, it's easy to get JVM metrics and things. It's pretty standard, uh, Kubernetes and memory and whatnot. But what you wanna do is actually instrument and use uh, like timed annotations, counted annotations, gauges, histograms in your code base to better understand what's going on inside there. So what you need to choose the metrics that are important to you and they will be propagated through this, this pipeline. So now once we've spammed that a few times, we can then go to Grafana and log in. And now once we've logged in, we can go to dashboards, and create a new dashboard, a visualization, and now we can see Prometheus is here. 
and from here now we have a metrics explorer and we can see that we have all of the metrics of the java application like the graphql fetch uh, seconds um, http server the jvms in there um, we've got the hotel collector process so that's actually the, the agent running um, basically everything uh, we need in here cpu system tomcat sessions all that so let's let's search for some graphql metrics so that's for data that's your active we select this one and then in here you'll see that we have different um, tags and one of them is the metadata client id and if you remember and that's the values abc and if you remember so now this is where the data would actually be visualized if we had data spanning over a period of time so we can see that it's working here end to end and as i said there as you remember we have there the metadata client id and that's the client id that's enriched inside here so we've added this metadata.client id as a tag to every metric that's coming in from the java application so if you have different applications and they just need to send maybe a particular piece of information in a header or an attribute then you can go and process that or maybe you want to just enrich that in the attributes processor you can just add that in here so that's pretty much it that's a little demo i'm going to be creating a pr of all this and you can go ahead and look at it and see if you like it or not and what benefits it might give you in your your applications so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did give it a like or write a comment maybe i've missed something maybe there's um, something you'd like to add just add it in the comments appreciate that and i'll see you in the next video